Pesta and titanium cookware. It's being thought as one of the best cookware is made at the moment. Does titanium make for better cookware? Jed from Cook Culture. This is my friend Matt, Chef Matt. He's one of our instructors here at Cook Culture. Hi guys. I've broken my arm. I've got some radial nerve damage. I can't cook that well, so Matt has volunteered to come in and help me out here. So thank you for that, Matt. Very welcome. Uh, so today, what we're going to be talking about is you know, Hestan titanium cookware and other cookwares on the market that have titanium in them. Does it make for better cookware? So I, I've never used the Hestan. Matt has done some research on, have, the, on yeah. the Hestan. Um, and so he's done a lot of reading and understanding of what it's supposed to do for us, but we both haven't used this cookware yet. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about it. So thank you to Hestan for sending this to us. Um, we're gonna be comparing this pan today against an all clad D5. So this is a tri-clad piece, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be going against a DeMeyer 7-ply Pro-Line. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's, there's technically advantages from a, a tri-clad titanium, but a tri-clad Hestan pan into a D5 and into a 7-ply Pro-Line, you know, from, from a weight perspective, they should uh, you know, cook better, you, you hope. That's technically what you should be paying for. However, the Hestan pan is a premium price point. It is more in the DeMeyer Proline price and may actually be even a bit more. Is yeah, it's similar. I'm, I'm Maybe not quite. I think their 10 piece set is actually probably around the same. I think it's around 1800 Canadian, okay. give or take. Yeah, so, so that Canadian yeah. dollars, so we're probably yeah. talking around 1400 US dollars, yeah, somewhere in there. Roughly, yeah. Um, so, you know, in the same price range as Proline and Atlantis for a 10 piece set of mm -hmm. a tri clad titanium cookware. Yeah. So, are we getting a benefit from it? So, today, Chef Matt is going to do some simple cooking for us. Um, we're going to <laughs> work um, with some eggs, frying some eggs. We're gonna do, you find that the lead and host effect for all three of the pans that could be different. We are using a gas hob. Each, each uh, burner is a little bit different. Each pan is going to find the lead and host effect at a different rate. So he's gonna do his magic with some water to find those settings. And then we're going to fry an egg and see what we get. We're then going to fry some onions and you know, see kind of you know, how is it going from transparency into some browning and cam caramelizing, and you know, what's the end result mm. uh, between these three pans? And you know, does the Hastan, you know, does it outperform the D5? I, I hope so. Mm. Uh, and really, my, my main interest is how is it comparing against the Proline? Yeah. So uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Okay, so we have set up the three pans. Mm -hmm. uh, Chef Matt is just trying to work the right temperature. Each one of these pans behaves differently uh, when you are trying to get the lead and host effect. Mm. So the lead and host effect is when the pan is at a perfect temperature that a ball of water will just roll around in the pan. I don't know if you and can see that. that is a, a yeah. perfect temperature for frying an egg mm. or for cooking something to become nonstick. Yeah. You still want to use a little bit of, of fat, uh, whatever your choice of fat is. We're using grapeseed oil today. Um, and you should get a non-stick ish as best as you can result. Yeah. Sometimes it's perfect, sometimes you get a little bit of sticking in the corners, but it, like really it's things slide out and the cleanup is very, very small. You mm -hmm. don't have a mess basically. Yeah. Once you have the lead and hose effect. Yeah. I made a video, I think last year on mm -hmm. that. So there is a video on my, our YouTube channel that shows you exactly how to do that. So we won't get yeah. into the details of that today because uh, learning it takes a little bit of time, mm. uh, but once you got it, it, it's done and you know what it is. Yeah. So uh, how are you? Are you are you've got these I guys I think we're good. Go? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, that the, guy's good. That guy's still, there we go. That's yeah, what we so want. The, the Pro Line pan is always a little bit more difficult to get there because it takes so long to preheat. Mm -hmm. The seven layers of the Pro Line is just, it's just a little bit more finicky when it comes to it. But once it's there, it sits yeah. there beautifully because it behaves a lot when we're cast iron. Yeah, well, we were just talking about like in terms of like the weight, it's, it almost has like the same thermal conductivity. Like if you're doing a lot of heavy searing as a, as a cast iron, because it is seven layers of like stainless, then aluminum. Pro lines have a copper core in them too, do they No, not? no, that's no, in, the, in okay. the Atlantis. So the Atlantis, Pro line gotcha. is just, it's aluminum alloy and aluminum gotcha. um, layered seven layers. But yeah. With five layers of the inner uh, conductive material and then stainless mm. steel inside and outside. Yeah. That's why he's the boss. There we go. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna see. Like, I'm not sure if you can see from this angle. 
lead in host, or how many North American English speakers pronounce it, lead in frost, is essentially when you put What's happening here, you can see it kind of skittering around, is because there's a layer of steam that's happening under that droplet of water. It almost acts like a hovercraft. So you can kind of see this one dot here. It's just, it's just moving around the pan because there's that little bit of steam underneath, and it just gives it, it's frictionless, which is why it moves around like there's nothing there. So that is, in layman's terms, yeah. how that works. Uh, we're just going to wait for this guy to go off, and then we're going to start frying. For here, grapeseed oil, which is open. Glad I checked. Uh, just going to use just for comparison's sake. Also, we should say we realize this pan is a little bit smaller. This is an eight-inch pan. These guys are nine and a half. This is what they were kind enough to send us. We don't have these just kicking around in the other side. But in terms of construction, they're the same. Realize that they're a little bit bigger for this properties, though. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Yeah, Matt has controlled the temperature on yeah, each one of them. Exactly. So the lead and frost effect is the, the same across all three of them. So you will have a different. Um, conductivity for a smaller pan so if you're trying to get an equal result that can be a little more difficult if you are doing everything say at the same even temperature we're not mm -hmm. we've changed it so we've created the same result from trying to get it as non-stick as possible bingo so now we're just going to move that tablespoon of oil around sorry teaspoon of oil not tablespoon my bad i misspoke just get it coating just because even with something when you're trying to get it to be non-stick a little shimmer of fat just makes everything a little bit, plays a little bit nicer. Let's put it that way. So now we're just going to go with an egg into each one. Pretty sure these are just what? Large eggs? Yep. Don't mind the shell in that guy. Gotcha. These guys are going. So what are you waiting for here? Right now, I'm just going here. Gonna start seeing if I can start waiting for, so essentially when you're cooking anything that's protein, and you can almost think of eggs as being liquid meat in a way to put it, um, you wanna make sure that that bottom layer actually gets a bit of a sear on it, because that crust will actually help it stop sticking to the metal. So if you do that, which is kind of what we're waiting for here, and then it should be fairly easy to get up from the pan. And you can see that these are lifting off quite easily with this fish spat. Really not in this guy. I'm actually... Thinking. So that's kind of one of the trickier parts too, is trying to get a fried egg off a pan without bursting the yolk. But as you can see, it is possible. This guy too. Almost there. See that one came right off. This guy as well is coming right off. And we don't know if that, oh, it's a little bit of yolk spitting. Hopefully uh, Jed's phone doesn't get hit in the crossfire there. And this guy is actually sticking a little bit more than I would expect, which is interesting. Um, so how this guy is made is actually, so it's aluminum and then apparently the way they're calling it is nano-bonded titanium, which is, according to them, about four times stronger than stainless steel. So you can see that guy, not quite as, airlifted off as these guys are. So that's interesting. So I'm gonna turn these guys off now just because these eggs are pretty well done. We'll get them on a plate. We can compare. So that's our all clad. That's our Demeyer. You can see this stuff just comes right off as well. Nothing, and then this was our Heston. So you can see that's probably where the most residue actually is. So that is coming off, but um, one thing I will say, which is something that they do claim, is that you can barely scratch this. And I'll say I'm going, like, I'm not reefing on this guy with this fish bat, but 
there is like no scratching on the surface whatsoever, which I realize when it comes to actually cooking, that has nothing to do with how it's going to do anything. Um, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah. it, it looks like the Hestan didn't stand up as well as these two guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you think? What do you think in that? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I wouldn't mind just doing a test fry one more time because I feel like when we are adjusting it, it for my own, I think I might have, the temp might have been a touch too low. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind just doing a quick clean, just doing a one more just to yeah. see. And if it does the same thing, then obviously there's no. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. do you think you were being kind of cautious because it's a smaller pan? I think so. I, th I think that was probably what I was doing because I was like, oh, I don't want it to overheat. But same yeah. thing as we talked about in the beginning, each burner is a little bit different. So it's kind of just making sure. Okay. I think I was a little bit. I was, it's also a product I've never used. I've used these guys before, so I kind of got an idea of how these, you can yeah. dial them in. True. First time with this one, so I'm not 100%. Yeah, yeah it's like driving yeah. a new car. Like you get yeah. in a car as a car, but you kind of got to used to where everything is. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to do a quick wash on these guys, and we're going to do one more just on this and see if I can maybe play with the temperature a little bit more and see how it goes. Great, yeah, we'll do? It, it, 100%. Yeah. They, like, you know, I, I have no skin in the game here with Heftan. <laughs> you know, they said to us to, to, to play with, to try. Mm -hmm. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, um, but it, like, logically, it should work. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Yeah. Like we should be able to get it the same way. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I think you're right. There's a little bit of of I guess you know it's not really biased, but there's mm -hmm. a bit of understanding these pans of yeah. kind of where they sit, what they should be doing. Yeah. Um, and so let's get that cleaned up let's and uh, and see how it goes. Cool. Mm. Okay, so Matt ha almost has this at uh, the right temperature. Yep. Um, Round two. Yeah, we're both quite convinced that this should work just as well as the other two pans. Yeah. Um, so we're going to try it again, just out of interest's sake. Exactly. Uh, then what we're going to do is move in to frying some onions across all three mm. and, uh, and see how that goes. But yeah. uh, first, let's finish up this guy here. Totally. And again, this is kind of one of their claim to fame is how titanium is quote unquote stronger. But after cleaning that with a brush and everything, it's almost brand new looking still. Like that still has that sheen. That kind of gunmetal thing you get is from that titanium as opposed to like a more silvery looking stainless, I guess. Yep. But yep. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it, it looks you know perfect to only use once, but yeah, yeah it looks it looks perfectly new. Yeah. Um, so I, definitely, it, it seems like good cookware. You know, our biggest concern when we're trying cookware is, does it meet the price expectation? Exactly. You know, when you spend a bundle on cookware, you want it to be hopefully equal to the dollars you spent. Mm -hmm. You know, Demeyer industry and Demeyer Pro line specifically, mm. um, you know, it, it has met our expectations over and over and over and over again. It, oh, yeah. it's, it's such high quality cookware that, you know, when people send us cookware for testing, that's our benchmark. So we're like, okay, well, if it costs X and it does Y, then, you know, it fits here. Yeah. Um, and that's where we want to kind of see, you know, does this meet that expectation and where does it kind of slot in? Oh, we are at that right point again. So one more time again, grapeseed oil, one teaspoon. I'm gonna get that in the pan, give it a little move around. Start getting, you can see it's heating up, kind of getting what they call the fingers. We move that around, it kind of drags a little bit. So, move this out of the way. All right, round two, moment of truth. <laughs> Here we go. about what I'm just saying. So again, first little bit, don't touch it too much because you're going to want, like I said, kind of let it set a little bit and get that little bit of a crust going underneath to help it not stick. You can usually tell, like if you see like that little bit of a brown ridge forming around, that's usually a good indication that you can start touching a little bit. Oh yeah, so same thing. I think like I said last time, I think it was more of a temperature thing because this guy is starting to lift off quite easily. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and the point here too is if you used quite a bit more fat, yeah. you would have less sticking. Completely. Yeah, we, you know, we, we really try to balance the amount of fat that we use. Yeah to getting a, 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 a stick release. Exactly, because that's really the thing too though, is like almost any pan can be non-stick if you're using two tablespoons of butter. Yeah. Right, so it's about kind of using, that's why we're only using a teaspoon of grapeseed oil to show that like you can do it without needing to heap on so much fat. You still seem to be getting a few. A little bit of stick in. still, yeah, a little bit. Uh, but here, I'm gonna let it go for a little touch longer. I'm just trying to get it released up. 
That's another part to think of too though, is like the outside of the white is going to cook and caramelize a little bit quicker than the inside where you have that big piece of albumin. Yeah. So because of that, it might need it just a touch more time just to, yeah. for that center to But for people that over. don't like their their yeah. uh, eggs browned, yeah. you know, this using a stainless steel pan is probably not the best route, right? Unfortunately, yeah. Because yeah. that's the thing, like that's the best way to get it to non-stick is yeah. to do that. So. They want to use uh yeah. they'll want to use a carbon steel pan. No, for sure. Like a well-seasoned carbon should be good. Yeah. And there we go. Came right off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. better result. It is. I think that, like we talked about, is just the temperature thing. Yeah. And okay. now we're going to get onions going. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And we're just going to give this a quick yeah. little clean. But still, like, still not as good. Uh, I would say even so, it took a little bit more... Finesse. A little bit more finickiness. And that, that's yeah. kind of what you usually expect out of a D3, right? I'm sorry, out of a, kind of. Out of a tri -clad. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, so we have the three pans laid out again, uh, all preheating, preheated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, Matt's diced up beautifully, beautifully diced up some onions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, I get a lot of critique on my diced onions. What, right? yeah, what do you yeah. mean? Lots, lots, yeah. I've yeah. seen yours, they look pretty good. Yeah, I can't get them quite even enough. Anyways, whichever, that's beside the point. Yeah. Um, so we got all three of these guys laid up. What we're gonna mm -hmm. try to do here is get some simple transparency. Mm -hmm. I'm moving to some caramelization and we are regulating the heat per pan. Yeah. So we're not gonna keep them all the exact same heat. Yeah, just we're for me, because I'm OCD, I'm switching these over. <laughs> okay. That's where they were last time. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got the all clad D5. Mm -hmm. We've got the Proline seven layer and we have a three layer Nanobond titanium Hastan pan. Mm -hmm. The results on the Hastan weren't great. Um, sometimes getting the leading hose effect and getting a, a nonstick pan off of a triclad can be more difficult. And that is just kind of how it goes with pans that are thinner. Um, they can be harder to regulate kind of a, a, a medium temperature of cooking. They can mm. either be a little too hot or a little too cool and they stick. That is why I always advocate for heavy cookware doesn't have to be the most expensive cookware, but usually when you're frying on the stovetop, heavier cookware gives you a bigger buffer uh, of, of that kind of the, what the Leiden Frost effect mm -hmm. does. Uh, I keep calling it Leiden Host. Yeah. Leiden Frost effect. Either way. Anyways. I think the other way sounds cooler anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you want to get that this kind of window of of allowing the pan to be kind of nonstick, and again, that's why I advocate for heavier cookware because you get that larger buffer. Uh, mm. Cast iron, awesome example of yeah. how you get this wonderful buffer of kind of hot to cold in there. You can cook things at a kind of different results because of this really nice buffer of yeah. low heat, low-ish heat will give you that nonstick, and high-ish heat will give you that nonstick, mm. and you can kind of regulate the heat in there totally. while getting the same nonstick results. Yeah. Stainless, a little bit less so. The thinner usually, like a triclad, even less so. So your yeah. band of kind of nonstick ability is really, really thin, and that's kind of what we saw with the Hess band, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so these guys feel really nice yep. and heated. I think we're ready to go. Let's get these guys on here, sure and we will do a little time lapse here because nobody wants yeah. to watch the full- Onions cook for <laughs> 12 <laughs> minutes or whatever it is. So yeah. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so we're at a point now where I would normally, if I'm caramelizing onions, I'll add a little bit of moisture to the pan because that kind of actually helps just steam them a little bit and it kind of helps them cook down. So we're just gonna do a touch of moisture in each pan. It's gonna be a little bit loud, so I'm gonna make some noise. You can see that kind of just helps lift everything. You're essentially deglazing the same way you would any other way and that kind of just helps bring all those tasty flavor bits off the bottom of the pan and kind of adds them back into the onions. Again, when it comes to surface area, smaller pan is going to take longer for that liquid to evaporate and reduce. These two guys are almost there already. And again, you can see the most even cooking for sure is off of this guy here. Just the way they're more evenly colored, they've cooked down nicely. And then these two are actually pretty comparable, I have to say. Even with the smaller pan, these two actually look pretty similar. The all clad in the Heston, with the Demeyer kind of in the lead there. All 
All right, so all of our water is cooked off. So you can see there's not like really anything left in the bottom of the pan. So we're just going to bring them out onto plates and compare them. So first we'll go with our all clad D5. Pretty nice. Again, like we said, little bits of brown bits here and there, but pretty nicely cooked. Here's our Demeyer Proline 7 layer. I would say it's a little bit easier to see here, but those are probably the most evenly cooked. They're translucent all the way through, similar brownness across all surfaces versus just on edges. And here is our Heston Nano Bond. And I was saying as well that this guy, I would say, is actually comparable, if actually at the end, maybe actually even a little bit nicer in terms of evenness of cooking than the All Clad, you can see as well. Um, honestly, they all, they're all great pans. They all did a great job. For me, the, the far and away lead is this guy. Um, but for just a small eight inch pan, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this one too. Okay, so three pans, mm -hmm. three results. Mm -hmm. I think you were just saying that they're all very, very similar. Pretty much. So yeah, the results, like I, I can see the nuances, hopefully in the close up the video that we got, you can see the, the nuances of how the Demeyer does what Demeyer does so well. Yeah. The Atlantis pan, it, it's so heavy. It's yeah. just really hard to compare when you take it to a pan. That's a tri -clad. That is a tri-clad. It's just, it's just, it's unfair really it in is, some yeah. ways. Um, you know, the D5 has always been a, a workhorse. It's yeah. a good quality pan. Yeah. Um, you know, it compares very much to the industry from Demeyer. Yeah. They really give you the same results. Exactly. Um, you know, but that was, was interesting. So, you know, good yeah. results from, from the Nanobond. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing well above or different. No, not so much. Right? Per se. Um, so, you know, the, the, the egg test, I, I'm thinking technically because of being a triclad is where we weren't getting the results I think we so. wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it's a learnt thing. I think we would still struggle. I think probably like one out of five times you get it perfect and other times you yeah. get a little bit of inconsistency. For sure. Because it's a thinner pan. Yeah. Um, you know, what Matt was saying, I don't know if you got it on video, mm -hmm. but he did like the weight of it comparatively. He did like the weight yeah, of it actually, even as a triclad. Yeah, even as a triclad, like I was saying that this small, smaller eight inch pan is a similar weight to the all clad D5, which is technically a five ply. So just in that too is saying something. Yeah. Um, that being said, I don't know how thick the titanium is on this comparatively. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum alloy in the middle and then titanium in each, on each yep. side. Yep. Um, but yep. titanium is usually pretty light as well. So maybe that means there's a, just a thicker layer of aluminum yeah, for, in the middle. From my understanding, yeah. technically the, the amount of titanium used is very, very small. Oh, okay. Right? So it's, it's not a lot of titanium mm. is needed within the composition of the stainless steel sure. right? for it to yeah. do its job, to, to add strength and durability mm -hmm. basically is why titanium is used in, in cookware. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I, I personally still don't know if titanium cookware in stainless is worth the money, yeah. because I don't really care if I get a bit of scratching in my stainless steel cookware. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't really yeah. make a difference. You know, when, when you look at a nice clean piece of Demeyer or All Clad, for instance, it's got some scratches in the surface. Yeah. I don't really care. No, neither do right? I. And the way I look at it, like kitchen stuff, like whether it's, I know it's nice to have a nice, beautiful mirrored finish on all your things, but yep. for me, it's a kitchen tool, and I find you can tell when tools are well used and well loved is when yep. you're actually using them. Yeah, so. yeah. and if you use well, a good yeah. cleaner, like a barkeeper's friend, yeah. or all clad make basically the same thing. Yeah, um, all clad's friend. It, all clad's friend. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it will clean up your cookware and it will look brand new anyway. Yeah, so, pretty close. So I don't dislike the Hestan. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a fine pan. Yeah. I don't know if it would be worth the money. Yeah, that's the thing for me too, because it is titanium and I'm sure there's some cost that goes in there and they hold the, the patent for it. So yeah. I'm assuming they can charge essentially whatever, similar to like new pharmaceutical stuff and they have a patent, they can kind of charge what they I want. Guess. Yeah. Um, but that being said though, like it is a great pan is if it was my money and you could go for either this guy or this guy and they're, so and talking, it sounds, sorry, talking about the Atlantis yeah, Proline. The Atlantis Proline yeah. or the Heston Nanobond. Yeah. Um, what we were talking about, they're pretty comparative yeah. in price. Um, both made in Europe. Both this guy has a 30 year warranty. I think these guys are similar. I don't think it's quite as long as that. Yeah. Um, but I would probably go for this guy just because. Yeah. Yeah. For, for that, for that price point, it's just, it's an incredible product. It really is. Yeah. And yeah. it really comes down to the weightiness of it. Yeah. You know, and I say that all the time and lots of videos, I bang on that all the time. Mm -hmm. The weightiness to it gives you the advantage of allowing the flexibility within the, the, the kind of sweet spot of cooking. Yeah, right? your, and, your butter zone, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's just simply, it comes down to the weightiness of the cookware yeah. is, is the advantage there. So, 
I yeah. hope that that helped anybody who's interested in you know these high quality brands of stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And any questions, please throw them below. Thanks so much.